วัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So for the past few years in January, I've shared with you different ways to make vegetables delicious because January is when we're all gung ho about that, right? So this year, I am super excited about this technique because it's really just one ingredient that can elevate all sorts of vegetables, including the most basic and boring of them all, broccoli, which is what I'm going to use as a demo today. Now, it's a really easy to make ingredient. It'll last forever in your fridge. You can throw it on all sorts of things. Let's get started. So this awesome ingredient I'm talking about is salt cured. Fish, or what in Thailand we call pla kim. This is a dish that's inspired by a dish in Thailand where salt cured fish is stir fried with Chinese broccoli. It's a super popular dish because it's so good, but it's so easy to make the salted fish at home. In Thailand, we use king mackerel or short mackerel, but any good old mackerel, you know, whatever you can find at your store, will work. You can also use salmon or any other firmer flesh fish as well. But mackerel is sort of the classic. I've got just a fillet here, and then I'm just gonna generously salt this. So you want a good blanket of salt, and ideally you would use sea salt, nicer tasting salt. But I forgot to bring it, and table salt's the only thing that I have, so that's what we're using. It will work. You want a nice thick blanket on both sides. Okay, that's it. All you need to do with this is let it sit in the fridge for really anywhere between two to 24 hours. It is up to you how salty you want this. The saltier it is, the longer it will last, but the less you can use in the final dish. So you use like tiny little pieces, sort of like. Like a condiment, and that's how it's done in Thailand. It's quite salty, but if you want to be able to chew on bigger pieces of it, 12 hours, even like two, three hours, will be better for that. So this is something that you kind of have to experiment with just to see how you like it. I have one that I made yesterday. So once you've got the fish salted, you want to rinse off the excess salt with cold water, then pat it really dry, and then this is what you have. You will notice that the flesh is significantly firmer because the salt draws out a lot of moisture from the fish. And now we're gonna cook it. And mackerel is quite fatty. I find that it will release its own fat after it's had a little bit of time. Heat doesn't have to be super high. Again, at this point, you're just cooking it. Okay, that's pretty much done. Just a couple minutes per side. Okay. Let's check the other side. Ooh, nice and golden brown here. And that's it. You're all done. So let's take a break because I want to tell you about our sponsor, Care of, which is a monthly supplement subscription that I've been taking for about a year now. My favorite thing about Care of is that they come in these. Convenient daily packs, which are compostable, by the way. So I was able to reduce all this clutter of bottles to just this one pretty box that I keep on my kitchen counter, and then it actually helps me take the vitamins because I remember it because I can always see it. So how it works is you take an online quiz that'll help determine your concerns and your goals, and they'll give you personalized suggestions for supplements that fit your need. Now, if anything changes, you can just retake that quiz. These come monthly. So you're not going to be stuck with a big bottle of anything that you no longer need. Let me show you what I've got in my pack: multivitamins, of course, calcium, fish oil, and I always get vitamin D because we don't get enough sun here, and it's really important for your bones and your immune system. A new thing for me this month is probiotics, which I got to help with my digestion. So the reason I trust Care of is because they are transparent. All their products are backed by science, and you can go on their website to look at all the research behind each product and even where they source their ingredients from. My goal for 2022 is to focus more on my health, and eating well is a part of that, of course. But it is hard because I love to eat indulgently. So for me, taking vitamin just gives me that peace of mind that even if my diet is not perfect, I got all my basic needs covered and probably more. So visit the link in the description box to take the quiz and find out what's recommended for you. And use my code PILIN50 to take 50% off your first order. The fish is ready. Now I'm going to show you how you can use it in a really simple broccoli stir fry. And I'm telling you, this broccoli stir fry is unlike any other broccoli stir fry you've ever had. Just wait. We're going to chop this into chunks. But first, you want to taste it. 
because you need to know how salty this is and therefore how chunky or how small it needs to be. If it's very salty, you want to make it small. If it's quite mild, then you can make it chunkier, okay? Mm. Ooh, salty. Yeah, I need to make this small-ish, but not super small. Like I'm, I'm still okay to eat that. Okay, that's good. We only need about half this fish. Again, if it's really salty, you might also decide to use less fish. And it's gonna like break into shards. That's totally fine. That's what it's gonna do in the stir fry anyway. All right. And now the only other trick I'm gonna share with you is to do with the broccoli. One of the key tips that you can take away for any kind of broccoli stir fry that you're doing is make sure when you cut it, every piece has a flat surface. So nice, perfect little tree shaped florets are cute, but they don't taste as good, okay? You want this surface, which we're gonna sear and brown so they taste more like charred roasted broccoli rather than steamed broccoli, okay? Go time. First, we're gonna sear the broccoli. One extra step, but it is going to make all the difference in how the broccoli tastes. So get the wok nice and hot. Be generous-ish with oil as the broccoli really do suck up a lot. You can start laying down the broccoli without waiting for the oil to be hot. Get about half in there and you want to lay them flat side down. This is the little step that makes all the difference. Just give it a check. Oh, nice. See that? That is exactly what we're going for. They don't all need to be brown like that because some just don't have good enough contact to make that work. But as long as you got, you know, most of them have some browning going on, you will do yourself a big flavor in getting that charred, charred smokiness. Okay. So I'm happy with that. Again, we're not looking to really cook this. We're gonna finish cooking them when we do the stir fry. This is a flavor adding step. Now I'm just gonna do the other step. In the same wok, just on medium heat, because the broccoli already has some oil in it, you don't want to put too much oil in here. I'm going to add some garlic that I have pounded roughly in a mortar and pestle because I like the chunky garlic look. And then my fish. The fish is now going to sort of infuse into the oil, add that fishy umami flavor to the oil. But a word of caution here, you don't want to cook the fish for too long because the longer you cook it, the more moisture you drive out and the saltier they become. I learned that the hard way. I was like, let me get this fish really crispy and golden and fried and then it was so salty. So if you're already happy with how salty it is, just don't go overboard at this stage. Just a little bit until the garlic is soft. Mm. Oh my God, the smell of garlic and fish. Okay, I'm happy with that. Smallest bits of my garlic is turning golden. In goes the broccoli and a really simple but powerful seasoning. Some oyster sauce, always oyster sauce with broccoli, Chinese broccoli, so good a little bit of soy sauce and just a touch of sugar to balance. I'm gonna add just a touch of water to help it cook a little bit. Woo! If you're feeding kids, you can add some black pepper or white pepper or I'm going to add some Thai chilies and I'm adding them a little later so that the spiciness remains mostly in the chili so people have the option to eat the chilies or if they don't want to, the rest is relatively mild. All right. And I like my broccoli still pretty firm. That's it, you guys, you are done. The best broccoli you've ever had is done in just a few minutes. Ah, oh, this smells so homey to me. Bits of salted fish reminds me of bacon bits in the context of Western cuisine where it just adds that salty, umami punch to just about anything. Look at that. And that chili landed there like I intentionally did it. Perfect. You wanna have this with rice because this is salty. Always salted fish with rice. Great thing about broccoli is the little bushy part 
holds on to a lot of the sauce already for you. Mm. Broccoli, I'm telling you. How could it be this good? With salted fish, that's how. Mm. So good. Oh, the fish is perfectly salty. How many hours did I do this? I did this about 16 hours. Just a perfect amount of saltiness, not overwhelming. And it also adds a bit of chew. This is why you wanna pick a firm flesh fish so that when you're chewing in the broccoli and the rice, you've got that like, oh yeah, there's, there's essence of, of protein in there. And you feel like this is a lot more substantial than it is. I mean, I've had this with rice just as a meal on its own and I didn't feel like it needed anything else. Like this does not come across like a side dish to me, even though theoretically it is. So I hope you give this a try. I know many of you are gonna wanna eat vegetables, be healthy and all this stuff. This is a way to do it without feeling like you're depriving yourself, okay? The recipe, as always, will be on hottaikitchen.com and a special thanks to our Patreon supporters who help support the show. If you wanna watch my videos ad free and get bonus content with every episode, you can check out what Patreon is all about. I'll put the link in the description below. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time for your next delicious time.